Yeah, another review I haven't done yet is for the Ostend Bunker Pro. I purchased this Bunker Pro and to be honest I didn't have the best start with that Ostend uh, bunkers. I used to have the RV5 with the add-on tent and all that gear and, and that was good quality. I had that for a long time. However, I did sell it recently because it was just too bulky and I didn't use it often enough. If you follow my videos, you know that I sleep in stretcher tents probably for the past seven years. I always used to have the Australia stretcher tent. That's a cheaper version and in certain ways it's better uh, than the more expensive Ostend Bunker Pro. Mainly the Austrail is lighter, it packs smaller. Um, yeah, that are probably the two main advantages. The disadvantage though is that the fly it has um, is pretty much like a sieve. It does not really withstand a proper rain or in the case of a friend of mine, Dave, we've been away recently. Look at that Dave stretcher, the Austria, and the water is coming straight through. And that is only, look at that. And that's no crazy rain here. That is just a, a little sprinkle. So that's why I purchased a bunker. To be honest, the first bunker I purchased probably three, four years ago, um, just to test it, uh, how different it is to the Australian stretcher. And when it arrived, the zippers didn't work. The mattress had stains on it, even though it came out of the box. So I returned it, couldn't be bothered anymore. Um, probably two years ago, I purchased then another uh, Ostend Bunker Pro and that one arrived. I used it on one trip, on the South Australia trip, and the seams up here started to rip apart. So I contacted Ostend and waited for a replacement. I had to destroy my old stretcher, I had to cut it in pieces. And then it took, I think, eight or nine months to actually get a replacement stretcher. It was absolutely ridiculous. I contacted them, I don't know how often. Uh, I was told one would be reserved for me anyway. I don't want to go too much into it. It was an absolute pain. So I got the new stretcher eventually. Took that on the first trip um, with Scotty in the New England Tableland. And one of the pop rivets came out. Uh, when I unpacked the stretcher, I found the uh, top of a rift nut lying in there. I didn't know what it was from. Now I know because this bolt came out here. Oh, this rift nut. It's just a joke. That's a third time now that the stretcher is replaced. That unit has now how many nights? Three nights. Yeah, three nights. I mean, three stretchers pretty much no one lasted longer than than a month however the last replacement then definitely uh, went quite a bit smoother and quicker and within a few weeks i had the third ostent bunker pro which is the one you see in the back here now so i use that now on a few trips and i really take that if there is a chance of rain again because this is a fairly good uh, ripstop canvas. It's much more substantial and thicker than the Australia one. And it definitely uh, can cope with a good shower. And I tested that already. So that is no problem. Let me first go into the things I like. Um, very comfortable. I like the fly. The mattress, the base has a very thin insulation in, so if you um, should forget your mattress, I always have a mattress in. It gives you something underneath there. Um, I like that you can actually take off the fly screen. So if that rips, you can take all that part out, get it repaired or replace it. 
I do like that you can extend the front fly and also that the sides of the stretcher are v-shaped. This gives you room to keep your shoes for example dry. It also allows better air circulation and therefore reduces condensation. Also some of the parts um, you can replace or at least it looks like it. I don't know whether they actually have spare parts. I'm not so sure about that because they certainly couldn't provide me just a new fly for the one where the seams uh, uh, ripped and actually they ha didn't have enough stitching so it, it couldn't really be fixed either. I tried to fix it, uh, get it fixed but that didn't work. The Austin Bunker Pro is also 10 cm wider and 10 cm longer than the Austin Easy Fold Stretcher. In regards to packing space, the Austin Bunker Pro takes up nearly double the space than the Austrail Stretcher Tent Easy Fold. The three biggest benefits for me using a stretcher tent and the reasons why I still use them after seven years is that number one, you are off the ground. So if it's raining, you never have to be afraid of being flooded. Number two is that it is the most comfortable sleeping solution for me with a good mattress. I nearly sleep as well as at home. And number three is fast setup and pack down time. I show you here the setup of the stretcher tent in a time lapse. This was done in a very relaxed pace. I can have my whole setup done, ready to go into bed within around 10 minutes. I can also pack in in around 10 to 15 minutes and that includes everything. Folding the stretcher tent back in is a little bit more tricky, especially if you have wet ground because you're supposed to lie the stretcher on the side on the ground and then fold the legs in. However, if you have a wet ground or you have prickles or sticks on the ground, it's not really a good option. So I actually found a way how I can do it on my knee. I'm not sure whether that works for everyone because I think you will need a certain height. But let me show you here how I fold the stretcher in without it really touching the ground too much, especially not the fly screen and the side of the stretcher. A little tip if you use a stretcher tent or even a tent to be honest, always have one of these dry bags. Yeah, and you get them with the white mouse. So that is one for your fly. Even though the fly is not dry now, it's much easier to quickly put it into the dry bag to pack it in. So it speeds up the packing time. But more important, if your fly is wet, uh, you don't want to pack it together with your stretcher tent and have everything wet. So that way I can put the wet fly in here and then when I set up in camp, it's usually daylight, it dries very quickly. So very good to have in your car and I always use it. I would also recommend to always pack down the rear guy rope as rain will pull very easily at the bottom of the stretcher. And even if you have the guy ropes down, it can pull as you can see here. That is something which definitely could be improved. One of the benefits sleeping in the stretcher without um, fly is easier. That's how my morning wake up call looks. And obviously the night with the sky and the stars above, absolutely magic. One question I see often asked in regards to stretcher camping is whether you can use it in very cold weather and in winter. And the answer is yes, you definitely can because I have slept in my stretcher tent down to minus 10 degrees. However, you do need the right setup. I have a dedicated video about cold weather winter sleeping and how to stay warm. So please check that out. But in short, you need a good mattress with an R rating above six and a good down sleeping bag. But there are also a few more tips and tricks which you can find in the video. What I don't like, first of all, it's heavier than the Austrail one, quite a bit. It's bulkier. Um, and I don't think it's really that well designed. So if you need to get in there and you have the stretcher not in summer mode now where you have everything down, you just have one slit in the middle access to a stretcher is not very well uh, thought through. 
you only have one narrow opening and for example if you need to go to the toilet at night you don't want to roll up the fly you just want to get quickly in and out and especially if the fly is wet you're pretty much guaranteed to get wet when you get back into the stretcher um, yeah i don't think that's well designed it would be much better off having two zippers and something which you can really roll up if i want to have it like this here now it means i also need the front open so yeah, there, there are quite a few things which just are not that well thought through. Ostend also changed the design from the first stretcher I had and now only has a zipper on half of the fly screen at the front. Previously it had a full zipper and I found that much better. Not that I would enter from the front, but it allowed me to lean in and for example roll my mattress up much easier. So in short, it is quite a bit heavier. It is quite a bit bigger and access to it is not that easy. I should also mention that the Ostend Bunker Pro is more than double the price of the Easy Fold single stretcher tent. So it is quite a bit more expensive. However, I still keep it, I carry it, I use it any time where there could be rain coming. And let's face it, with the third El Nina on the go here, I think it will get way more use than the Austrail just because there are more chances of rain. So that's my review of the Bunker Pro. Make sure to also check my Austrail stretcher review. Um, I probably have to update that though because they have released a newer version. The older version had a slightly better fly uh, from what I have seen and also um, the access was better I reckon but um, maybe i do a video about the new um, Austrail stretcher at some stage. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please keep in mind, this is a self-funded channel, so I would greatly appreciate if you could help me out by sharing, liking and subscribing. And if you can, please consider head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can really help me making these videos. Thanks a lot for watching and see you along the tracks.